2002 Matchroom Sport PGA Euro Pro Tour has arrived in Aberdeen for the sixth event of the year. The tour is for developing players and making your way as a touring professional is a lot more than just playing golf. You've got to get used to travelling, staying away from home and also the ultimate pressure that if you don't make the cut you're not going to get paid. Well after five events the order of merit is shaping up. At the head of it is Eamon Brady. He won last week at the ISM International. He also had a second place earlier in the year. That gives him a £3,000 lead. The next positions down to fifth are made up of our other previous winners and no less than a £1,000 separates them all, so it's very tight. Where would our winner come from this week? Well, I don't think you'll have to look further down than sixth to tenth. That's where our tour's most consistent performers are. David Orr heads that list. He's already had three positions inside the top 13 and the others from seven to ten have all actually had a second place finish this year as well. So the consistency is outstanding. The challenge this week is the Grampian International Freight Northern Open. It's being held at Newmacker Golf Club just outside Dice in Aberdeen. It's a 12 year old course and water is featured on no less than nine holes. What a challenge. So, could I pick the winner this week? Well, maybe I could, but why don't you try your luck at picking the next golfing superstar? Because there's every chance you're going to find them here on the Matchroom Sport PGA Euro Pro Tour. challenge of this Hawks Hill layout may establish Newmacker as a great tournament venue and the par 72 call should test the tournament's strong field. Some familiar faces teed it up in the first round. Last week's winner Eamon Brady pricked up pretty much where he left off with a 67 and an early lead in the Northern Open. Yeah I'm enjoying it at the moment I really am. I played well last week and you know, I'm on the hugs back now and it's great, like, yeah. A strong Scottish contingent was headed by Kenneth Walker, who found himself just a stroke behind Brady, shooting 68. There was a strong international feel as well to the field. Tor Anderson from Denmark, handy placed at two under par. The Australian Daniel Gaunt, who last week featured strongly in the ISM International, was another who finished with 70 in the first round of this Grampian International Freight Northern Open. So it's Brady yet again out in front, but four Scotsmen very much on his tail. Walker, Ronald, ranking there, and so too the 42-year-old Fraser Man. Tor Anderson, amongst those tied seventh at Castletown Golf Links last week, also handily placed. Now watch out for those Pullen brothers, Stephen and Mark, both featuring in the top ten. Eamon Brady's nerve held in the second round, but only just. He finished with a drop shot on 18, but still his 69 for round two kept him on top of that leaderboard at eight under par. Fraser Mann, who shot 69 on day one, stepped up the pace, going one better with a round of 68 on day two, taking him just a shot behind leader Brady. And with an Irishman and a Scot leading the way, well, we might not have a Welshman, but here's Englishman Andrew McKenna forcing his way up to third on the leaderboard with a 68 on round two to go to five under. More Scottish sunshine on day three, and it saw Fraser Mann take control. His 69 adding to his opening 36 holes of 69 and 68 saw him open up a four-shot lead over his nearest rival, Tor Anderson. Not so much to smile about for Mann's playing partner for the day. Eamon Brady, everything could be going so right for him over the last week and a half, but it all came unstuck in round three. A 77, five over par saw him slip back into the pack at three under. So at the top of the leaderboard saw Fraser Mann out in front. Plenty of players will feel though they're still in the hunt. Will Fraser be the man? So the question going into this final round of the Grampian International Freight Northern Open is anyone, can they catch and get into that lead of four shots of Fraser Man. Well, we start our coverage of the final 18 holes at the third and the second shot into the par four of John Wells, currently at five under par and a good effort being watched by the eagle eyes of one of the European Tour's finest coaches, Scott Cranford, 
joins us in the commentary box. Wells going well at five under par. Martin Le Miserie, Scott, also thereabouts at three under. Yeah, and there he goes to four. Martin, one of our most consistent performers on the tour this year. Yet to have a win, but you'd have to believe that he keeps giving himself a chance. It's going to come soon. A lot of Scotsmen around. Colin Gillis, another one from Falkirk. And he's looking to save par at the second. That keeps him at three under. But these guys need birdies, don't they? With someone like Fraser Mann, with that big advantage of four shots, birdies are the course of the day, aren't they? Like that one. And that's John Wells going to six under par. And speaking to many of the players before they went out, Richard, it's one of those courses where they feel that they can make birdies, but go on the wrong side of things, they can equally have a high score. Now, Fraser Mann, our overnight leader, opened up with a par at the first. Here he is playing his approach shot into the par five and setting up a birdie chance. Now, Brian Marchbank, here's a name that probably a lot of the viewers have uh, heard of from the past in the European Tour. I'm sure some of our more mature viewers have watched him on many, many occasions on the European Tour. Brian not playing very much these days, running a sports management company. Tor Anderson's a name that we saw only last week at the ICM International, finishing in the top ten, just chipping up at the par five. Three back now, he's picked up an early birdie and is right on the tails of Fraser Mann. There's Stuart Davis on the third, currently five under par, and that's an excellent approach play there from coming out the rough from Stuart. Somebody who's been suffering from an injury, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now man for his birdie, not to be, but I suppose pars, at least for the time being, I know Anderson uh, is hot on his tails and got a chance at the same hole for a birdie, but at the moment, pars will do him. Yes, and we mustn't forget that Fraser's not had any major wins as a professional, so I'm sure he's feeling on edge. And that was Brian Marchbank, who saw his approach shot. Oh. And convert the birdie. Anderson to get within two of the leader. <clears throat> Come on, another roll, and it was in. That's painful. Yes, you really do feel like you've given away a, a wasted shot there. Final round of the Grampian International Freight Northern Open, and what a week this could be for Fraser Mann. He wouldn't have even been in the field, but for the fact that his Musselboro assistant, Stephen Burton, failed to get through the pre-qualifying competition. He said that if Stephen had made it, he'd have had to stay at home to mind the shop. He's going to be back there at 7 o'clock on Saturday morning but maybe with a cheque of £6,500 in his back pocket. This is his tee shot at the closing hole on the front nine, and <laughs> well, the first sign of a mistake, Scott. Yeah, it is, but there's a few shots in hand. Well, we've said he hasn't won before, Fraser, but he's had some good results, second in the British Club Pros Championship in 1995. Is that a tree yeah. iron from Brian Marchbank? It was, and look at that. He found the daylight that's supposed to be there. 95% air, I'm told. I bet you've only ever found the 5% wood. <laughs> Here's Anderson. And it's important for Anderson, isn't it, the fact that he's actually playing alongside Fraser Mann. It, it gives him some kind of advantage, maybe some chance to get a little bit of psychology through. Definitely does, and it is an advantage, and you, you know, you know firsthand what's going on, more so than the other players. No, Stuart Davis also coming out of the thick rough, but fantastic pitch shot. Uh, Gordon Law, we haven't seen too much of Gordon, but he's six under par on the 17th hole. And playing one of these tricky little chip shots off a downhill bank. That's what can happen sometimes, the club face can just close a bit. Distance was good, but the club face just closing and leaving a five foot of it for a par. And after that good recovery, March Bank for Birdie, slow down. Left himself a, a tester there to try and get his par. <coughs> David Orr on 17, also having a good day. One of the toughest holes on the course this 17th. Beautiful chip from David. Again, one of our most consistent performers this year is David. And a name to watch out for. I believe he's going to win before the season's out. The 17th hole, John Wells, who's just picked up a birdie at the previous hole, the 16th, playing his approach into the penultimate hole of the tournament. 
Uh, nearly facing himself with one of those chips. I just demonstrated. Uh, Colin Gillis on 18. Colin, a six times money leader of the Scottish region. And a super approach shot there, giving him a self a chance for a birdie. A chance to get in the clubhouse at eight under par, which would lead the way for the time being. But of course, three from home is Fraser Man and still going along nicely at 11 under par. And with uh, Stuart Davis dropping a shot at 15, his lead now three shots again. That's an S, of course. Martin in Missouri knocks in this birdie putt at 18. It's a good run, is it? And he had a go. That was a brave go. He knows that second prize is worth more than third, and good luck to him. John Wells to get to minus eight. Oh, very close. Wells, Wells, Wells. Would you believe it? I don't think John does himself. He's had a few of those today, but we'll be seeing more of him. Now, uh, Colin Gillis, we saw a beautiful approach shot. This to convert it into the birdie, and indeed he does. A little punch of the fist, and he'll be proud of that round today, will Colin? And here he is. Man now with his approach shot to this tough 17th, and well, you feel if he can find the green here, most of the work will be done. Coming off a huge drive there. And uh, you can see going with such a short iron, great control. He's, uh, look at it. He can't wait to get there and have a putt. Almost Garcia-like, wasn't he, the way he was striding <laughs> down the fairway. Here's Davis at the final hole. And a nice shot there from Stewart. Didn't quite get the grip coming out of some semi-rough. It's not easy to get close to this flag on 18. And you can see the flag there bending over. The wind certainly picking up and making things just that a little bit more difficult for these closing stages for the final few out on the course. Anderson, well, he crept up, didn't he, to Frazier's man's lead at one stage. Six under, though. This for a birdie. There I say it's going to finish six inches away, as they all have for tour today. And pretty much it does. So, I mean, some good putting. It's not a criticism at all. He really has putted beautifully. But it's been one of those days where it could have been four or five shots better had they have just dropped for him. But his day will come. Certainly looks as if it's going to be the week of Fraser Man, 42 years of age, and possibly, and surely, heading for his first victory. Teeing off at 18, and just 359 yards from home. But where's that one? A little ungainly, the swing is looking to the right. Doesn't appear to be panicking. Out of bounds down the right there, but we can see the ball, so should be okay. Oh, right. a sign when the player goes down for the tee it's normally straight down the middle and that's exactly where our Danish friend Tor Anderson is so let's have a look at this uh, 18th then 359 yards for the players to finish 17 we've had a look at this one slightly easier than the penultimate hole it is a little bit. The players at this length, though, as they hit it further up the fairway, it becomes very, very narrow, slightly uphill. Green's got some strong undulations in it. So, yes, it should be straightforward, but not a walkover. So, so, so would you say Referee Kevin that, Feeney. Yeah, I would say that. Having a chat to our leader, Fraser Mann. Okay, and a uh, bit of a break yeah, here. So a he wasn't out of yeah, bounds, yeah. but because of where his ball landed his line of sight was impeded no, 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 by an advertising no, 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 board and he's getting a free drop here which maybe just makes it that slightly more easier than it would have been further right yeah well the lie didn't appear to be too bad and when you've got a three shot lead i think from that lie you wouldn't have struggled too much but if we look here he's over to the left now fraser by that advertising board we just swung round past so not an easy shot because he's got to come over that bunker and he won't get that much control on the thought unless he's been very lucky with the drop. Let's just remind ourselves, though, he does have a three-shot lead coming into this hole, and really anywhere near abouts the green will do. And 
now about 20 odd feet from the pin. That'd be just fine. So Frazier Man closing in on his first win, and no wonder it's time for the thumbs up. Anderson, though, with a bit more work to do. Yeah, he's enjoying the cameras now, is Fraser Man. Anderson playing for some very important prize funny. And look at this. Well, I thought he was going to have a spectacular finish there of a two. A good chance to finish with a birdie and some good crowds here at Newmacker. Just outside of Aberdeen. Anderson for birdie. What a shame. He was doing the courteous thing there of putting out to Anderson to allow the definite winner of Fraser Man to go ahead and take the arena. So Anderson finishes at six under par after final round of 72. This for Man to finish with a birdie. But yet again, as it's mainly been on this back nine, another par for Fraser. He is the man. And he finishes with a round of 71. He is the champion at the Grampian International Freight Northern Open. Wonderful stuff. Yeah, it really was. And you have to be pleased for him. Two terrific second place in big events in his career. And where well, you can see the joy, he really is delighted. Absolutely. Fraser is the man. Some hardy efforts from those tucked in behind him. A lot of Scottish names up at the top of the leaderboard. But it's one man who counts. He was leading after day three, and he's ahead after day four.